Hey everybody and welcome back to Sweatpants BI. I've taken a bit of a break while I wrap up my next Udemy course, which I'll be dropping here in just a few more weeks as I sort of do some finishing touches. One thing that came out of that Udemy course that I'm really excited to present is a variety of lessons focused on DAX expressions and uh, all kinds of different situations when you would wanna use DAX, including some videos that are focused specifically on different types of time series analysis. So I've got about 10 videos uh, coming up as part of this new Udemy class that I'm developing. And I thought that they would be very, very useful. And also as a uh, U budding YouTube influencer, I realized I really need a lot more content for my Sweatpants BI YouTube channel. So I decided to just go ahead and release uh, my DAX lesson as an ongoing series of mini DAX tutorials on Sweatpants BI. So I hope that you'll enjoy this curriculum. This is going to be part of a series that I engage in for the next several weeks on my YouTube channel, on Sweatpants BI. If you're learning DAX, I hope you really hope that you find these useful. I'm gonna run through all kinds of different functions and use cases. Let's go ahead and get into it. Hi everybody, and welcome back to Power Pivoting, an introduction to Microsoft Power BI for career changers with me, Sean Chandler. And everyone, we made it. This is the one about DAX, or data analysis expressions. As I said, in the first video of this course. By and large, I was going to try to avoid too much coding if there were other ways that I could you know, accomplish something uh, with low code or free of code solutions. But you can't talk about DAX without actually jumping into some coding. And DAX is a really important skill to have at your disposal when jumping into Power BI. There are a lot of really cool things that you can do in Power BI without DAX, but in order to really unlock some of the more useful calculations and really carry your reports to the next level, you are absolutely going to start uh, needing to get your hands dirty with uh, data analysis expressions language. So first, in this video, I'm just going to quickly give you an introduction to what DAX is and talk about some concepts related to DAX and when we use it. But by and large, uh, talking about DAX is kind of dry, kind of boring. So there's going to be a ton of tutorials in this lesson where I'm going to actually walk you through a whole bunch of very common DAX functions and talk about when to use them and give you some examples and actually walk you through a whole bunch of demonstrations for utilizing DAX. So since this slide deck is kind of the dry, boring stuff that is helpful to kind of get out of the way, let's go ahead and just jump right back in to the PowerPoint deck. You know, DAX is one of those topics that's a lot more interesting when I'm showing you how it works than just telling you how it works in a PowerPoint. So we're go going to try to get through this deck relatively fast. I just want you to know that in this lesson, I'm going to talk at a very high level about how DAX works, when you should use it, maybe some functions that I find really useful, and also some areas to apply DAX that are going to help you master the basics a little bit faster. Then we're going to talk about some topics to keep building your DAX skills, how to keep your DAX organized, tools to help you improve, and of course, we'll wrap things up at the end. I've been writing DAX code for almost a decade, and honestly, I'm still figuring out all kinds of new ways to do things, tricks that I didn't know, and capabilities that just blow my mind. DAX is a really fun topic, but it's also very, very dense. Uh, and obviously, that means that we're not going to be able to get through all of the intermediate to advanced applications of DAX that are out there. But let's go ahead and dive into it. So DAX stands for Data Analysis Expressions, and that's basically why we use it in Power BI. It's the calculation language that we use to perform most of our data analysis in Power BI. So while yes, we can technically take almost any numeric field from our data set and just drop it into a visual and set the, the uh, calculation or aggregation to sum or average or count, there's all kinds of situations where we wanna perform more complex calculations and DAX is really our only means of making that possible. In a lot of ways, DAX is pretty similar to the formula language that you might be accustomed to writing in Excel. 
What tends to be more difficult for first-time users of DAX to grasp, however, is that the formulas we're writing don't apply to just cells and columns that we manually select and you know give very specific instructions on exactly which elements from our data we want to perform a calculation on. Instead, these are calculations that apply to our entire data model and are responsive to the specific data visuals that we're applying the DAX to, and they respond to things like slicing and filtering our data in Power BI. Uh, you know, DAX is meant to facilitate interactive calculation. So this means we can't really, you know, pick the specific cells uh, within a data visual or the specific data points very easily in order to perform more complex calculations. In order to do that, we have to really know how, how the, kind of the nuts and bolts of DAX work uh, in, in order to sort of achieve these higher level uh, calculations that, that we want to do, which I'm going to dive into, you know, in sort of the demonstrations of this lesson. The point is that DAX is a really powerful calculation language, and it gives us flexibility in how we approach a broad range of uh, business analysis situations. It's also routinely updated by Microsoft with useful new functions and capabilities with every new Power BI release. So feel free to book the link that I've written out here so that you're always up to date with the latest functions uh, that have been added to Power BI. So the first big thing to understand about DAX is that because DAX calculations primarily serve our data viz needs, we only write it in the report builder. In other words, Power BI's front end. You know, DAX ultimately helps us visualize metrics, uh, especially ones that aren't just like summing uh, or averaging, um, you know, or finding the min or max value of uh, numeric fields. In other words, you won't have to worry about DAX in the Power Query Editor, where if you recall from, from previous lessons, we use M. And there are three different types of objects in the front end of Power BI that we can build using DAX. Measures are easily the most common application of DAX and will be the primary focus of this lesson. Measures are stored calculations, for example, the summing or average of a column or the division of two columns or subtracting one column from another and obviously much more complicated uh, arithmetic than the examples that I just gave. The measures that we write can then be just dragged and dropped into as many data visuals as we uh, want to apply them and combined with other fields from our data set in order to create the specific types of data visuals and sort of the look and feel of a data visual that we want. While they are primarily used for aggregation and computation, these measures can even store instructions on how to format visuals or contain dynamic text logic when we want like data visual titles to change based on the filters that a user applies. Measures can reference other measures uh, in order to perform more complex calculations and formulas. And because they're built on our entire data model, they dynamically recalculate when users apply slicers. And you know you can even write measures that use uh, logic or fields from that span multiple tables in your model. Calculated fields are new columns that we're adding to our data from the front end using DAX. For example, if we want to lump several field values into grouped categories, you could do this in DAX or the Power Query Editor. You know, when it comes to uh, creating calculated columns, I typically do these things in the Power Query Editor so that these columns are loaded into the data model alongside any other Power Query Editor transformations that I might have applied. Uh, and since DAX transformations occur in memory and consume more of our machine's resources, performing these transformations in the Power Query Editor is highly recommended. It's also important to note the calculated column values written in DAX don't dynamically recalculate based on user interaction the way that measures do. So, I mean, yes, you can create uh, sort of new columns on tables using DAX. Uh, it's relatively straightforward, but I do tend to advise that people 
perform as many of those uh, transformations as they can in the Power Query Editor. There are performance um, benefits to be realized by doing that. And the same goes for the last object that you can create using uh, DAX, and that is calculated tables. While DAX you know, also gives you the ability to create new tables in your data set, for example, table, tables that summarize and aggregate other tables in your model, it's still really highly recommended that you try to achieve this functionality in the Power Query Editor when possible because of some of the other uh, performance benefits that I referenced earlier. Of course, all technical products have many different ways of achieving the same goal and recommend recommendations around performing a task in DAX versus the Power Query Editor become more or less important depending on the size of your data model. And having less data opens up more doors on how you can accomplish different tasks because there's less overall burden on your data model. If you're using a relatively small table and very simple DAX calculations, you know, maybe uh, there's a little bit more license uh, to be in efficient or, you know, do things your own way uh, because any potential performance implications are going to be immaterial. With that said, you should probably consider using DAX when performing the calculations needed for your data visualization. You can also use DAX to summarize or filter data elements you need for those calculations and for organizing complex conditional formatting, for example, when you want to highlight specific data points in a visual. And there are even some DAX functions that let you dynamically toggle on or off the table relationships in your model which is a functionality that can only be achieved using DAX. You probably shouldn't use DAX if you're creating derived data model elements like summary tables or conditional columns. Uh, for example, if you want to group items from your data together. Um, this is just going back to what I mentioned earlier. If you, Anytime you're trying to perform a transformation that can be accomplished in the Power Query Editor, like adding conditional columns or creating new columns from existing fields in your data, you probably want to do it in the Power Query Editor instead of DAX. Uh, that way, these new data elements get pre-processed into your data model, which can just save you some performance lag uh, on in the front end. So where should you start learning the dozens upon dozens of important DAX functions? Here are some common functions that I recommend students who are new to DAX start with, and these should cover a lot of your bases early on. It's no surprise that knowing how to perform a variety of aggregation uh, functions or operations is important for any kind of mathematical language. So you're going to want to know how to sum, average, divide, subtract, all of that good stuff from your data in order to help your business users understand how some of their most important measures are performing. And you'll also frequently encounter situations where maybe you need to find the min or minimum or maximum values of items within your data or even count or rank them. Another important skill to understand in DAX is how to make broader comparisons between different items in your data. And performing these comparisons means understanding how to filter your data model down to specific data points of interest and compare these data points to the rest of your data. Filter functions help us identify what we need and are often used in combination with aggregation functions. For example, when we need to calculate the sum of sales but filtered for a specific region, state, sales team, or product, things like that. And one function here that is sort of the mother of all DAX calculations is calculate, which we're going to return to many times in the remainder of this course when we're applying DAX. So just be on the lookout for calculate in particular. Information and logical functions allow us to pass more specific instructions to DAX measures, telling DAX to return different outputs based on different criteria. A lot of these types of calculations involve passing conditional criteria where if one thing is true, return this output, but if another thing is true, return a different output. Things like this. Text functions help us manip manipulate string or text values in DAX and are especially useful for formatting calculation outputs exactly the way that we want them to look and for creating dynamic text values that update based on a user's interaction. Using text functions, we can write dynamic sentences or text that populates with real-time selections from our report to help explain what a user is viewing. 
And finally, time and date functions are invaluable when we need to perform complex calculations on time series data and can help us uh, calculate rolling averages, running totals, and so much more. I often tell my students that time series calculations are the most useful and best way to master a lot of DAX quickly, which is why we're going to be spending quite a bit of time on this topic, talking specifically about how to calculate trends over time uh, in time series DAX as a lot of these applications combine a whole bunch of different functions that you see here from aggregation functions to filter functions. In addition to time series calculations, group comparison is also a useful area of focus for learning DAX. DAX has many useful functions that allow us to rank items in groups based on the value of a measure, to perform aggregations over all the values in specific groups from our data set, and all sorts of other really useful calculations to help us isolate and visualize specific insights and trends within subsets of our data. After all, it's relatively easy to just take fields from our data set, like I said, and just drop them into data visuals. But when we need to present insights that are less straightforward to calculate, DAX is often you know, the only way that we can really get at those numbers. For example, if we want to know daily average sales for the past 30 days, yes, we can apply some of the uh, visual level, level filters, but sometimes it's a lot handier to just have that calculation ready to go in a measure that we can apply to all kinds of visuals. There are also all kinds of ways to apply things like uh, custom color formatting to specific data points and dynamic text. DAX has a ton of text manipulation functions that allow us to combine text with the outputs of measures and slicer selections to create dynamic titles for our data visuals based on a user's selection, for example. We can also use DAX to isolate the three highest values in a bar chart and apply separate coloring to those bars from others in the visual as means of highlighting those top three items in the visual. This is one of my favorite ways to call attention to specific items in a chart, and it helps the user see what I intended them to see. One really important fundamental concept of DAX is to understand how it evaluates calculations against your data model. A common problem that I had when starting with Power BI was that I failed to fully appreciate how utterly intertwined DAX is with how my data model is structured. Because DAX calculations can be applied to your entire data model and trace everything happening behind the scenes, uh, without you having vision on you know which tables are being hit or how a calcul how a calculation is being run, it's really important that you understand the difference between filter and row context when evaluating DAX expressions. Filter context basically instructs your DAX which specific items in your data model to retrieve. It helps you save calculation bandwidth by ensuring that your calculations will only run against the subset of data items that you want to evaluate. For example, a filtered group of items or a specific time frame. These filters can be extended across our entire data model prior to the DAX evaluation based on relationships between tables. And this helps ensure that our DAX measures don't waste resources computing values that we're not going to actually use. Row context, on the other hand, refers to the aggregation that we perform on a specific column of a table. And so it iterates through all the rows in the table that we're applying that row context to and compiles the result that we want, such as summing or averaging a column. And row context aggregations get applied after filters have already been applied. Once you've mastered the basics, you'll want to work on getting better with DAX through more advanced applications. As with any language, mastering DAX is largely dependent on mastering the syntax, structure, and calculation steps of DAX in order to write more complex calculations, ideally without a loss of performance. Dynamic DAX is when you become comfortable enough with DAX that you can start taking outputs from your user interface, such as the output of a slicer or when the user clicks on a visual, and inserting those values dynamically into your DAX calculations or formulas. Examples of this would be building a what-if scenario feature into one of your tools. So imagine that your user needs to play with a formula in order to simulate different outcomes based on changes in sales volume, average daily sales, or other important metrics. 
You could write a formula in DAX where the inputs of the formula are linked to slicers that contain numbers or values that the users can manipulate. And then as the user manipulates those different scenarios, the outputs of their interactions become inputs into the formula which allows them to play with different configurations and, poss and possibilities and recalculate on the fly. Performance tuning and optimization is another really great area to grow into. As you become more comfortable using DAX and as your calculations become more complex, it's all but certain that you're gonna start running into performance limitations or lag, especially if you start working with larger data sets. Understanding how to optimize your DAX and how DAX works in tandem with the structure of your data model is a really fantastic skill in delivering more valuable insights to your users without sacrificing things that are important to your users, like load time, speed, and their overall experience. As you start developing more DAX measures, it also becomes more and more important to carefully consider how you're going to organize your DAX. In the beginnings of their learning journeys, many Power BI users just write measures within their data tables. This is often fine for new developers, but it can cause problems down the road, especially if you need to drop or add tables to your model, as dropping tables from Power BI also removes all the measures in those tables. So I highly recommend that you consider building measure tables, which are just tables in Power BI desktop that are reserved for organizing and naming your measures. Having all of your measures in one place can make it easier to reference which measures your report is using and when as well. And it also can help you um, more easily identify which measures reference each other. If your report has tons of measures uh, that kind of span your entire uh, Power BI tool, maybe you don't just want to create one measure table. I'm not saying that you need to keep literally all of your measures in a single place. Maybe you want multiple measures. Uh, measure tables. And, you know, depending on how you prefer to organize uh, the measures, you know, those measure tables can be set up according to the pages in your report. They can be set up according to the tables uh, that are primarily used by those measures. There's all kinds of different ways to organize your DAX measures, and I do it one way. Other people on my BI team do it do it their way. The point is just to, you know, really think hard about how you're going to organize all of these calculations that make up your visuals so that they're easier to navigate. Because especially on more complex projects, you might find yourself developing uh, or writing dozens, if not, dare I say, hundreds of DAX measures to accomplish all the functionality and data visuals that you want. Fortunately, there are also some great tools to help you learn DAX as well, and some of these might be worth a look or at least playing around with. The first of these is the easiest uh, because they're built right into Power BI. Quick measures are exactly that. They're just shortcuts to performing the type of calculation that you want, which makes them really useful for people who are new to DAX. When you activate a quick measure, a special interface pops up as a separate window in Power BI Desktop where all you have to do is just select the type of calculation that you're trying to perform, and then you just drag and drop elements from your data directly into the quick measure prompts. Power BI then automatically generates the measure for you, complete with DAX code, and you can just study and deconstruct what Power BI created in order to understand how to create similar future calculations on your own. Another really useful tool is DAX Studio, albeit it's a third party one, but you, it can help you manage your DAX by providing things like automatic formatting, performance tuning options, and all sorts of other useful features just to help you learn and deliver the best DAX code possible and to keep things organized. And finally, the tabular editor is another just really powerful third-party tool with a variety of built-in DAX features that can connect directly to your Power BI data model. Once tabular editor is connected to your Power BI tool, you can bulk add measures, bulk delete measures, and perform all kinds of additional transformations that might be a little bit trickier in Power BI directly. I'm a big fan of Tabular Editor, and I use it for all kinds of non-DAX situations with Power BI as well. Unfortunately, it does require a subscription to get the most out of it. Fortunately, my uh, daytime job company does pay for that subscription, uh, which you know kind of gives me free your license to, to work out with it. But it's definitely worth checking out, even if you just take advantage of the 30-day trial that they offer. 
So there are so many DAX calculations and functions that I have probably used a thousand times in my Power BI career that I routinely still need to Google. As with any technical skill, the best way to improve your DAX abilities is just to practice and hone your abilities on different business scenarios. And it's okay to get stuck or keep a crib sheet or something close at hand when you're just getting started. Uh, I definitely kept a cheat sheet on my desk for years uh, until I decided just to get better at bookmarking really useful websites uh, to, that teach DAX. Ine inevitably, you are going to run into a lot of errors and unexpected results, and understanding why your DAX cal calculations do what they do is part of the learning journey. And it goes without saying that your particular flavor of DAX is probably going to be quite different from my flavor of DAX or that of other BI professionals on your team. And that's why it's important to leave notes when you can on what your DAX is doing, especially as you get into more complex calculations. This will make it a lot easier for other people on your team to jump in and help you maintain code later on or help you troubleshoot later if and when something goes wrong. At the end of the day, Patience is the key when it comes to mastering DAX. So don't focus on being perfect in the beginning. Focus on keeping your DAX organized, understanding how DAX measures interact with your data visuals, and as you get, get become more mature with DAX, learning how to improve performance and streamline your code. So let's just go ahead and recap things uh, real quickly. Again, DAX calculations are an extension of your data model, and DAX isn't necessarily the best solution for every single situation. You know, if there are complex data transformations that you need to make to the data or the tables themselves, you might want to consider using something like the Power Query Editor instead. Time series calculations in particular are one just one of many great areas for sort of learning different DAX measures, um, getting exposure to a whole bunch of different useful DAX functions, and kind of understanding uh, different scenarios in which in which DAX can help you really, you know, do really cool things with data visuals. If you get stuck, don't forget that you can always just deploy a quick measure to get things restarted. And even better, the quick measure may be able to give you some ideas for improving your DAX uh, comprehension. And as with any skill, the best way to get better at DAX is just to find as many different opportunities to practice it as you can. So when starting out with DAX, you know, I'd recommend uh, practice writing complex calculations in multi-measure steps so that you can observe how every single step behaves. I see a lot of people mess up early on in their careers by trying to, you know, combine a whole bunch of different DAX steps all into a single measure instead of just chunking things out. If you need to write a really complex formula, write all of the different components of that formula as separate measures and then write a formula measure that combines all of the previous measures that you created. I promise it'll just be a lot easier for you to sort of follow the logic and understand what's happening behind the scenes. And congratulations, you have completed lesson 11 focused on DAX. Once again, talking about DAX is a little bit dry. Even for me, it's much easier to just show you how DAX works. And of course, DAX, like any coding language, has tons of uh, different functions that you can utilize, different families or collections of functions that you need to know about. Obviously, with a lot of coding language, there's really great documentation on Microsoft's websites to help you sort of understand the basics for any DAX function that they've released. But within my power, I'm gonna show you all of the most common DAX expressions that I use day in, day out, and try to give you some real world examples of when to use those. So we've got a ton of DAX demonstrations coming up. Let's go ahead and jump over to those in the tutorial videos for this lesson. Thanks for checking out the introduction to DAX. Let's go ahead and get our hands dirty with some actual DAX measures.